Hello, myself, Professor Renu Gupta, Dean and Professor in Education, Sanskriti University, Mathura. So today we will learn about equality and equity in education. Sometimes we think that both of these words are same as equality. We mean that every person is equal in front of the law. As under Article 14, equality before the law or equal protection of the law is guaranteed to all. It declares that the state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or equal protection of the laws. It means when a person goes to the court, whether it may be of any gender, whether it may be of any socio-economic status, whether it may be of any language speaking, whether it may be of any culture, whether it may be of any society, and whether it may be of a light group, whether it may be of poor group, or whether it may be of middle group, it means there will be no differentiation. We can talk about okay, when a person goes to the school for the admission of their child, they are not to ask that to which class he belongs. He is belong to general category or he is belonging to uh, reserve category. So it means there is no provision. So equal means that everybody has the right to get the education. Everybody has the right to get the justice. Everybody has the right to get the employment. Everybody has to right to participate in different type of activities. So it means it shows that everywhere and it is included in our constitution also as you can see under article 14 there will be no discrimination on the basis of sex gender socioeconomic status quality so it means everybody will be equal but here in the picture you can differentiate between equality and equity equality here we mean that sameness here, one person, one child is the longer, second is shorter and the third one is the shortest. But according to equality, all the three are on the same desk or the same bench. So, it means we will treat them all the three as the equal. So, it promotes fairness and justice by giving everyone the same thing. So, it means we are providing the same stool to all the three children. So that is equality. It means we are providing the equal type of education to all the children, whether he may be the brilliant child or he may be the normal child or he may be the under normal child, below normal child or we can say whose intelligence is less, whose intelligence is more, one is gifted, one is normal or we can say one is not gifted we will treat all the children in the same person. So here it means equality, that is the sameness. The other term is equity. Here you can see that we are providing the opportunities to come to the same level. First child is the longest one, that is why there is no need of any stool. Second child is the shorter one, the first child. So it means one stool is required for that child. But the third child is very short. So that is why there is need of two, uh, two stools. So it, if we provide this type of environment, it will not termed as the equality because we are not providing the same size of stool to every child. We are providing different stool to the uh, shortest child. We are providing different stool to the shorter child. So this happenings or this terminology will be termed as equity. Equity means fairness. It is about making sure people but access to the same opportunity. If the child wants to get the education in a school and he is very gifted child, so we will not treat him as the same to the other children. We will treat him as the special child, as the gifted child and we will provide the opportunities to excel his or her giftedness so that 
his intelligence can be utilized in the same way. Sometimes our differences can create barriers to the participation. It means there are differences. If the stool is not available, it means it becomes a barrier. So that barrier will be solved or that barrier will be removed by providing the fairness to each and every child. So it means that we are not to provide the equality to the students. We are to provide the equity also because if we are not providing the equity, it, may, it means we are wasting the time, money and energy of the gifted child. So that is why equity is required. On the other hand, if we take the example of reservation, that when the India got independence in 1947 and its constitution was framed in 1949 for 10 years because at that time everybody is not getting the equity status because some are belong to the low caste because our society was divided in three, uh, four caste. That is one is Kshatriya, Brahman, Chudra or Vesh. So it means to provide equity to the lower caste, Shudra or Vesh, uh, Shudra, uh, we are to provide the equity. It means we are to provide the reservation because they are not getting the good opportunities at their homes to get the education. So this type of facility is not equality. We are providing the equal opportunities to them to get the education. That there were no differences in getting the admission in the schools. But on the other hand, we are to provide the different type of opportunities. Here we can say that our eye to see all of them should remain the same. There should be no differences in the perception of these type of children. In this figure, you can see that elephant is a very big animal. Dog is the small animal. Monkey is another small animal. If we treat all these three in the same way, that will be called equality. But we can't treat all these three in the same way. We are to get, we are to treat all these three in the different ways according to their capabilities, according to their abilities, according to their potentialities. So that means in the education, equality is needed, but side by side, equity is also required. So it means now we are to understand what type of equity is there. So first one is horizontal equity. All of us know that what do you mean by horizontal? Horizontal means it is a straight line at the same level. So students who are alike should receive equal shares or funding. So it means we are not to provide the different type of share to the individual. It is measured by calculating the dispersion or inequality in the distribution of funds. As in the, uh, uh, if we talk about statistics, in the statistics, if we keep all the persons on the same line, it means we are treating them horizontal equity. It can be applied broadly in, compare, in comparing large and similar subgroups. For example, as we can take the example of some students at the high school kindergarten or in general classroom. In the classroom, suppose there are 30 students are there. We can't discriminate between them. That is why we are providing the same curriculum. We are providing the same type of methodology. We are providing the same evaluation system. So this way of providing the equity is known as horizontal equity. There is another term that is known as vertical equity. So vertical equity as we talk about in mathematics, vertical equity is the perpendicular line. In the perpendicular line, we can see that we are not providing everybody at the same level we are providing the different levels to each and every person. While horizontal equity is rather easy to quantify, but it is difficult to quantify the vertical equity. It recognizes the students and the schools that are different. That is why nowadays one term is to be used that is out of box. If any student is having exceptional qualities, it means we should not treat them 
as equal we should treat them as exceptional and different type of opportunities different type of facilities should be provided to excel their abilities so that is why treatment in the horizontal equity we can understand that we are providing the equal treatment to all the children because they are on the horizontal line but in the vertical equity we are not providing the equal treatment we are providing the unequal treatment according to their unequal qualities that system was introduced in 1986 when the new education policy now termed as national education policy in the time of mr rajiv gandhi uh, came into existence and according to that we are to provide not only the equality before that many commissions were there as we can talk about university education commission we can talk about secondary education commission we can talk about kothari commission all were talking about equality in education but in 1986 new education policy was talking about equity in education that we are to provide the special facilities for scs we are to provide special facilities for the sts we are to provide special facilities for, uh, for the uh, under privileged students we are to provide special facilities for the women we are to provide special facilities for the adult education so it means that term was related with the vertical equity it means providing what people need if the people need special treatment so for providing vertical equity we are to provide the special treatment to those children if we are to <coughs> access them at the right moment the uh, responsibility of the teacher is to diagnose what type of abilities the teacher is having that is why nowadays the strength of the class is termed as it should not be more than 30 to 35 because if it will be more than 35 the teacher can't have the access to each and every student can't have the knowledge about each and every student abilities and potentialities and if he or she will not have the uh, recognition of every student he will not be able to provide the right opportunities at the right moment to the right kind of child so that is why vertical equity is also required now we can see that students <coughs> you can differentiate between the horizontal equity and the vertical equity in horizontal equity we are providing the same treatment to each and every child in vertical equity we are providing the different type of we can say unequal treatment to the every child here every child remain at the same status but in the vertical equity every child remain on the different status so on the basis of this we can understand the meaning of equality and equity so while equality means treating every student in the same manner whereas equity means making sure every student has the support they need to be successful so it means in the education system we are not to provide the equality we are to provide the equity also otherwise we can't increase our productivity we can't make the good scientist we can't make the good researcher because every student will not be able to it means if we provide the equal treatment to each and every child it shows that we want to make every child a researcher we want to make every child an industrialist we want to make every child an agriculturist and it can't be because every child has some genes some qualities some innate powers as we know that uh, if we think about the definition given by the pestology he says that everybody has some innate powers with the help of the education we are to provide the environment for the harmonious development for the progressive development so that the every child can be developed according to their innate powers so that is why here equality means we are treating equal because our constitution says this that equal opportunity should be provided to each and every child but to excel the abilities of every child we are to provide the equity so that is why both are 
required now equality and equity under the constitution as we have termed that under article 15 under article 15 it says that there should be no discrimination on certain grounds what are the grounds the grounds are religion race caste sex or place of birth so it means this article 15 says that we can't discriminate on these basis it also provides equal right to make use of public places as we know there are different public places as community parks are there community libraries are there cinemas are there nobody can deny to enter any person in these type of places because they are public places they are not private places that is why they are termed as community resources so it means that this article 15 it is written in our constitution that no school can deny to admit any person on the basis of religion race caste sex or place of birth if any person want to enter in the uh, we can say temple in any temple so nobody can deny no pandit can say that he or she is not uh, allowed to enter in the temple because our constitution has given the this right to each and every person now article 15 also uh, states that article 29 shall prevent the state from making any special provision for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward class or citizen for the scheduled and sh scheduled caste and scheduled tribes as we were talking about the equity in education here comes the equity in article 15 it was related with equality but article 15 clause 2 also states that any state can provide the special provision why there is need of special provision because these scheduled caste and scheduled tribes are not so progr uh, progressive because they don't have the good facilities for reading writing at their homes because their parents are not so much literate so that is why special provision should be made in the article when 19 in 40 1949 the uh, constitution was made it has mentioned that at least for the 10 years this type of special provision should be provided to the persons belonging to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes so that they may come at the level of the general category article 15 clause 3 reads nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any special provision for women and children and provision has been made for separate institutions for girls so it means article 15 clause 1 was related with the equality <coughs> clause 2 related with the special provision for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes clause 3 is related with the special provision for women and children because in our ancient india women were not having Uh, much and much chances to get the education only the elite persons were able elite women ya yeah, women related to the elite society were able to get the education so it means there uh, the constitution can make the special provision the state shall make the special provision for the women and children in the employment also in the education system also and on the other hand one other thing was included in this that separate institution for girls <coughs> why it was so because in india the mindset of the parents was that the girls should not go to those schools who are providing the education uh, the type of co education because they say that girls should remain the safe so that is why the clause 3 make this provision that if there is need to so special institution should be developed 
should be established for the girls so that the parents may feel free to send their daughters in such type of schools because they will remain safe and secure <coughs> another thing is no untouchability this is related with article 17 so article 17 says that untouchability is abolished and its practice in any form is prohibited so this provision was introduced by gandhi ji when gandhi ji uh, saw that some people were not allowed to enter in the temple some people were not allowed to enter in the house of the mahajan etc so at that moment he announces that there should be no provision of untouchability so it means if we provide this so it means we are not providing equality to these persons so untouchability was abolished according to the article 17 <coughs> then right to open institution article 30 of the constitution gives the right to all the classes to open institution of their own will it means that the government is not capable or we can say government has no so much resources that they can provide the institution for every citizen of the country so that is why ppp 3 p's model came into existence where public private partnership is required so article 30 of our constitution says that if any person of the society has the capability has the uh, money has the energy and he wants to open the school or open the educational institution it means this right should be given to them if they are willing they can open the institution this article states that and on the other hand this article also relates with the minorities because many uh, many minority uh, communities are there in our society and they are also not having the full fledged facilities to get the education or to come at the level of the general category so article 30 provide this facility that all minorities whether based on religion we can take the example of uh, jain minority we can take the example of gujjar minority we can take the example of muslim minority so all minorities whether based on religion or language we can take the example of tribal people they also came in the minority so shall have right to establish and administer educational institution of their choice so it means the state will allow them to open the institution they are free to get the education they are free to uh, provide admission to the persons who are belonging to the minority groups whether it may be based on the religion or whether it may be based on the language so it means the state shall not discriminate against any educational institution the state will not say this is minority institute this is the open institute this is the government institute this is the private institute state will not discriminate any type of institute in respect of grant in aid on the ground that this is under the management of a minority whether based on religion or language it means when the state is to provide the grants to such type of institution there will not be any type of discrimination that this institution will get the aid and this institution will not get the aid if they are fulfilling all the conditions required conditions to get the aid so it means there will be no discrimination on the part of the state to provide the grants such to such type of institution then special facilities to the weaker sections so it means in our society the weaker sections are scheduled castes scheduled tribes other backward classes and women so that is why the facility of reservation was provided to such people so that they may come at the general level for this 
in our constitution there is provision of article 46 it says that state shall promote with special care the education and economic interest of the weaker section of the people and in particular all these schedule ka schedule tribes and other backward classes as well as shall protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation what do you mean by exploitation here we can say that one person of general category is doing the work of same type one person from the weaker section is doing the work of the same status we can take the example of man and woman if both are doing the same work same time period with same qualification with same caliber the state will say that exploitation should not be there it means equal work and equal pay there will not be differentiation in the pay system of the man and woman on the other hand the handicapped children are also weaker section so for the handicapped children the education and economic improvement become a responsibility of the government under article 46 so article 46 is related with the backward classes with the weaker section which is <coughs> in our society now we can say that why there was need of providing equity everybody favors the equality in education but with the equality there is need of equity also why it is required there are some reasons that equity is required number one it is a human right human right we can say that the fundamental rights were provided in our constitution when the constitution was made the seven human rights the fundamental rights were given but after some time the seventh right was withdrawn by the state and now the six human rights are there and on the other hand in on 10th december 1948 there were universal human rights were also provided to each and every citizen of the country throughout the world so it means every person has the right to get the education every person has the right to get the employment every person has the right to participate in different activities every person has the right to do any type of work according to their capability so these are the human rights so it means to fulfill those human rights there is need of equity second is essential for democracy our country is a democratic country and in the democratic country there should be no discrimination every person has the right to speak every person has the right to say every person has the right to do every person has the right to accept any religion every person has the right to get the education so it means in the democracy what do we mean by democracy it means prajatantra lok tantra so it means it is the law of the people and if we define the democratic government democratic what do you mean by democratic government the government is of the people for the people and by the people so it means for the success of the democracy the equity is required next is egalitarian society egalitarian society here we mean that in our society every person is not involved in agriculture every person is not involved in industry every person is not involved in tertiary sector so there are three main sectors and for the development of all these sectors there is need of providing equity in every type of society so that every society can be a developed one we can't ignore any sector because if we ignore one sector we can take the example of first five year plan in the first five year plan it was termed as agricultural plan also in the first five year plan many efforts were made to develop the agriculture of our country and the output or the outcome of that plan came into existence that our agriculture sector was developed but our industrial sector was ignored 
that is why in the second five year plan it was termed as industrial plan and much much efforts were done to develop the industrial sector so it means for the development of egalitarian society we are to provide the equity side by side the equality next point is economic development as there is a research done in china and the outcome of that research was that if all the persons if all the citizens of a country get the primary education our productivity may be increased to double but if every person is able to get the secondary education our productivity can be triple times and if every person will be able to complete the higher education the productivity can be increased to four times so it means economic development is directly related with the education system and when our economy will be developed so it will result in the development of economic status of the country it will result in the development of standard of living of the country it will result in the increase in per capita income because per capita income depends upon the increase in national income if economic development will be there so it means national development will be there national income will increase and when national income will increase per capita income will be increased so it means economic development will be there and when the persons will be educated then what will be the effect on the capital formation the parents as well as the persons related to the industry related to the agriculture they will try for the development of capital formation in what way that every person will believe in saving and investment but if the persons are educated they will believe in investment if the persons are not educated they will believe in saving no country can be a developed one if it will not believe in investment if all the savings we will keep in our houses so it means from where the industrialist will get the money from where the educational institutions will get the money from where the shopkeepers will get the money from where the businessman will get the money so it means capital formation will only be increased when the education will be there so that is why and in the education equity is required so it means with the help of the education we are providing to some the management education we are providing some to the agricultural education we are providing some to the teacher education we are providing some to the engineering education so it means we are not providing the same education to each and every person so it means we are to follow the equity for the economic development next is the search of talent if we treat every person in the same way as psychologist has described the persons according to the iq level okay if this person is having the iq above 130 so it means this person will be termed as the gifted person if they have the uh, iq <clears throat> between the 100 to 120 they will be termed as the normal person so it means with the help of the equity only not with the help of the equality we can search the talent of the pers uh, persons and by searching the talent we can provide the uh, different type of opportunities to those persons who are gifted person only then they will be helpful as we can take the example of chandrayaan chandrayaan will be possible only when our scientists are great scientists they have this type of talent so it means to develop the talents of such person there is need of equity without equity we can't provide the great scientist to any country we can't provide the good engineers to any country we can't provide the great industrialist to any country we can't provide the great educationist to any country without the search of the talent so it means equity helps in the search of the talent of such type of person 
and the last here is we can say modernization. So modernization here we mean that if equity will be there, the there will be change in the education system, there will be change in the agriculture policy, there will be change in the industrial policy, there will be change in the teaching methodology, there will be change in the evaluation system, there will be change in the living standard of these uh, persons, there will be change in the living style of the persons. As nowadays we can say that maximum time we are devoting to the development of digitalization. If the digitalization will not be there, what will happen? Okay, we are every time we will remain in the such type of work which will consume much, much time. So it means in the modernization our living style has been changed. Now much work has been done on the computer as we can take the example of calculation. If we do the calculation with the help of our hand, with the help of our mind, it will take some time. But if we take, if we do the calculation with the uh, help of the computer, it means with a very less time, we can do the calculation and come out with the conclusion. If we are doing the researches as in the previous timing, all the data analysis will be done by the hand and it will take much time. But nowadays, the data analysis can be done with the help of different softwares. So it means this type of equality, this type of development can be come only with the help of the equity, not with the help of the equality. So in this way, equality and equity both are required for the development of the nation. Thank you.